Hello! In this video, I'm going to be talking about A Brian and a Hard Place by Brian Kakul. Um, I'm also going to probably struggle a little bit with some of the names. I looked up pronunciation guides where I could, um, including the author's name. Um, but if uh, my pronunciation is a little off, just work with me. So, uh, as usual, let's go ahead and hop into the opening passage um, as kind of a part of our usual routine. No. If you do this, the whole thing falls apart. The coalition, unity, peace, it's all over. If I die, it's all over anyway. For me. Peter jabbed an angry finger at the window that separated him from the captain. And if you don't get out of there, it'll be over for you too. Sakir broke eye contact. Your future will come at a cost, he said, latching onto a handhold and stubborn refusal to clear the umbilicus. Peter threw his fist at the window. And again, until his blood painted the glass. Go, he shrieked. I'm your friend, Peter. Your brother. Peter felt his former understudy's words in his chest, but then his scowl smoothed. Rocks don't have friends. And with that, let's move on into the summary. So, A Rock and a Heart Place by Brian Kakul follows Commander Peter Stein. Peter Stein is an astronaut who was set to man an experimental near light speed spaceship. However, he has been diagnosed with ALS and has been replaced by Sakir Al Batani, his former understudy and friend. The spaceship is a joint venture by a wide array of different nations and organizations. It's suggested that this joint venture signals hope for global cooperation. Peter spends the first portion of the story reflecting on ALS and looking out over his rock garden. He compares his disability to the stones, claiming that soon he will be like them, quote, inert, inanimate, inconsequential, unquote. However, he gets a call from NASA inviting him up to the space station to see the spacecraft as a civilian. After going up to the space station, he discovers that Sakir pushed for him to come up and see the launch. Because the ship will be going at light speed, an eight-week trip on the ship would equal 26 years on Earth. And Peter realizes that if he were to steal the ship and use it on a longer voyage, he could effectively time travel 200 years into the future, while only three months would pass by on the ship. Peter assumes that by that point in time, a cure for ALS will exist. However, stealing the ship would likely end any hope of global peace and cooperation. All the same, Peter cho then chooses to steal the ship and, with Secure trapped on the other side of the door, launches off on the journey. Three months go by on the ship with Peter successfully returning to Earth 200 years into the future. Peter descends in a module down to the surface and opens up his door in hopes of being greeted by welcoming scientists of the future. But instead, it appears that Earth has descended into chaos. A few people armed with crude weapons and clothing f flee um, after inspecting the descent module and Peter before running away. Peter is left there feeling signs of ALS again and looking down to the pebble he took with him. In the final moments, Peter decides to name the pebble Craig, once again comparing stones to him. And so let's move on to our notes for this story. Um, according to Purdue Owl, quote, Unlike some marginalized groups, people with disabilities have frequently been at the foreground of representation. According to Snyder and Mitchell in Narrative Prothe narrative prosthesis, sorry. For example, a captain's prosthetic leg may entail a story about his obsession with a whale, or characters like Tiny Tim may serve as wellsprings of pity and emotion. Narrative prosthesis, boy, I'm struggling with that word, um, refers to the way narrative uses Narrative uses disability as a device of characterization or metaphor, but fails to further develop disability as a complex point of view. In short, stories often revolve around disability, yet erase it simultaneously." Unquote. So rather than ALS being a metaphor for something else, Peter uses metaphor to describe disability. The metaphor of the rock helps us understand the complex thoughts he has throughout the story, at times characterizing the rocks as immobile, remembering a source of pain, a good sign, despair, and finally human. Which leads us into our big question for this story. One of the big questions of the story is about how it relates to the history of disabled characters. How is Peter presented differently than characters like Tiny Tim and Captain Ahab? What is the goal of this presentation? As always, cite the text and any other sources to support your answer. With that, thanks for watching.